So welcome everybody. My name is Marta Garcia. I'm the uh, at PESC or ATPSC, whatever is the way you want to, to pronounce it. Uh, it's the Argon Training Program on Extreme Scale Computing. Um, I'm the program director for uh, 2018. Behind the scenes there we have uh, one of our deputies, Ray, he will present later. Um, and I, we are all, despite the fact that it's only me here be, behind, we have more than 100 people working in this project. So on behalf of them, I thank you for coming uh, on a Sunday and also for spending here two weeks with us uh, trying to learn more uh, to scale higher in this kind of complicated systems. Um, this is the outline for the presentation that we have now is the introduction to ATPESC. First, I will welcome you, I will see, uh, I, I will show you uh, the institutions very briefly. It's a very diverse uh, set of institutions, uh, scientific domains. You have noticed probably in your name cards, uh, 10 cards, you have a, a logo, your name, your institution and a logo. We want you to interact. Also for that we have the posters uh, to let you know which one is part of the physics, others are computer science, so the different logos represent uh, different scientific domains and uh, tonight we have the introductions where you will be uh, briefly mentioning your, uh, your topic. Uh, after that I will mention some um, briefly about Argon which is in ATPESC is the first letter, is Argon is the program who started, the, the laboratory who started this program and uh, the motivation for it. Uh, the curriculum, we have a new track this year, uh, machine learning and deep learning for science and some changes also uh, in the landscape. And at the end, some logistics because this probably is a complicated place and I want to make sure that you don't get lost. Um, so here you go. This is all of you, 73. Probably if you start counting, we have some that have trouble uh, with traffic, but in principle, this is all you, all the names that you will see. The name cards are supposed to be facing with your, your first name in front, and you have last name, first name, and last name behind. Uh, that way, we want also the lecturers uh, to interact with you, uh, if it's okay for the first name, uh, with the first uh, name. And, um, these are the institutions that, uh, that you are coming from, very diverse. Uh, some of them, we have more, for example, of Argon. Uh, this is not for any particular privilege, it's because we have more people who is knowing about the program. So the more you can spread the voice, the higher is uh, the probability that some people in your institution will be able to attend one day. Uh, of course, at Argon, we got all, all the announcements everywhere, so it's easier in general to have more applicants. Um, we have from the US, we have from different continents also, so it's, it's really a pleasure to have you here. We know that it's too much, two weeks of uh, your PhD or of your postdoc or some of you are working in, um, in, in institutions, like here we have someone from IBM, so we really appreciate uh, the time that you are taking these two weeks. Where are you? Some are coming from Europe, even the ones that are coming from uh, the US. Uh, when in your simulation you have time and space, so the space is here. You are in uh, St. Charles, Illinois. Uh, it's very close to Chicago, I mean it's relatively close considering US distances. Uh, we are about one hour, and also depending on the traffic, so one hour in uh, bird fly if you want, uh, one hour and a half with traffic. Uh, for those who eventually will like to visit downtown during the weekend. And uh, after that, well, compared with the scale, you can uh, see where we are, especially those who flew here. And well, uh, after that, we are a tiny, just a tiny little spot in the, in the universe. And time, uh, this is our initial logo. We keep it there. This, let me see. this is a, a set of, um, visualizations uh, that when we started, we created that small logo. This, for example, is, is uh, the simulation of a rheometer with the different pails. And um, this, I, I was working with that project. So this is uh, trying to study the concrete, how do you miss the concrete. So those are simulations that were part of the, of the beginning of the, uh, of the structure that to create this program. So um, over the time, uh, you are going to spend here 
two weeks. It's not like, a, I don't know if any of you probably have done a lot of online training. Uh, it's not the same. So we want you to interact between you and especially between the lecturers. Uh, we want you to, to, to engage with them, to ask them questions, because that's very important. That's how your memory is going to uh, especially try to uh, capture uh, that moment and remember over years. And uh, one of the important elements of uh, learning is repetition. You cannot repeat this training program, but that is the reason why we have the, the videos. Uh, and that is why we are investing uh, time in making sure that we post them, all of them uh, on our website over years. And then even if you are attending this year, you can go from the previous uh, presentation, the, uh, the previous dinner talks, and hopefully it go over all the future uh, of your career. Hopefully we are trying to get a new uh, material and, uh, and interesting topics for you. So ta -ta -ta, uh, hopefully that's the objective uh, to make sure that we are part of your training uh, from now to the future. So um, Argon is one of the, you see, this is the US landscape, landscape is one of the 17 national laboratories. For those, some of you are coming from, um, I think it's Los Alamos, Livermore, Oak Ridge, um, some are Argonne, and we have also several from Berkeley. But ho those who are from industry or other institutions uh, in uh, the Department of Energy has uh, 17 national laboratories. And we have some of them are defense and others are uh, department DOE or DOD. And Argonne is this one here. Uh, it was funded more than 70 years ago and um, is if you remember, probably, in, well, maybe not exactly the date, but um, the CP1, is Chicago Pile 1, is one of the first uh, attempts to get, here we go, this probably is one of those, is Enrico Fermi, and one of the first artificial nuclear reactors. So that was in the area of where is you, Chicago, and that is the origin of, uh, of Argon. You have in your pocket folder some uh, information, uh, if someone in is, is interested in more uh, details, uh, we can talk about that. And recently, the laboratory created a small, uh, tiny little video in the Lego, using Legos, of what was that CP1 experience, how they were working in uh, 1942. So we are talking about almost 80 years ago. Uh, Argon has a lot of facilities, uh, centers, but uh, those, most of you are going to the training, uh, excuse me, so to the, Argon tour on Saturday, and you will visit some of them. So, uh, okay, let me see where is my mouse. Here we go. We have the APS, which is the X-ray beams that you will be visiting. We have the Argon leadership. What is, uh, where is my mouse here? The Argon leadership computing facility, which is one of the Oscars um, ASCR uh, facilities from the Department of Energy. One is at Argon, at Argon, the other one is at Oak Ridge. So there is only two from all the national laboratories that have that leadership computing facility. And you, the tokens that you have, some of you, you have them in the mobile. Um, those are uh, allowing you to connect to the systems, the different systems that you probably saw in some emails, Cooley, Zeta, Mira, Vesta, um, and Citus. Those are part of the ALCF. You also have access, as Ray will mention, to OLCF, NERSC, and Angelosy, and we will briefly mention that. And um, other facilities that we won't visit because on Saturday they are not open, but this is the Center for Nanoscale Materials. If some of you are particularly interested in nanoscale and uh, that kind of research, I would recommend you to, uh, to well, we can get you in touch with uh, some people there eventually. Um, general picture of the facilities, at least. This one is what you are gonna see, ALCF2, Atlas, this one, and these two we won't be able to visit this time, but they are part of the campus of uh, Argon. And Argon has a history in uh, supercomputers. Well, at that time, uh, the first one was the Avidac, uh, Argon's version of the Institute Digital Arithmetic Computer. And uh, the funny thing is that at that time, they were comparing the speed of those kind of systems with person. Uh, so this trained computer is a person who was able to, to, to use this desk calculator and trying to compute the same operations for in that time. Uh, of course, we are talking about um, 70 years ago, 
uh, things have evolved. Probably your smartphones are much, much more like uh, supercomputers at that time. Uh, but uh, that's, that's very important because we see that evolution also inside the laboratory. We have Margaret Butler, who was a um, uh, nuclear uh, engineer. She also worked on, uh, in, with Oak Ridge in creating this Oracle, another supercomputer in 1952. Uh, designed at Argon, and then it was built in Oak Ridge. So there has, there has been also a lot of collaborations between those national laboratories. And um, right now, uh, we are working on Aurora. Uh, I don't know if you probably, some of you heard about, is the first exascale computing system that is gonna be uh, available, at least we are working on it for 2021. And, um, Unfortunately, we cannot say it too much because everything is confidential, uh, but that's the, it's the first exascale system in the US, so it's really a, a big endeavor. And it will be at Argon. You will see those who are gonna visit the um, TCS building, you will see the building that they are constructing outside to fit that machine. Um, and most of you, as I mentioned, will go into the tour on Saturday if you sign in we already have your information. If someone didn't sign in but want to go, please let us know as soon as possible so we can arrange because it's not so easy to enter Argon. You sold several emails. Uh, we need the uh, documents. We need to ensure that everybody has the badge to enter. Um, but it's really a pleasure that uh, a lot of you are interested in, in visiting those facilities. In principle, we are visiting the fourth of them. Sometimes uh, Atlas, we don't know till the week before if there is gonna be available. So far, no one told us that it's not gonna be available, but today is Sunday, so uh, I'm assuming that tomorrow uh, they will confirm. So in principle, we will go those four uh, facilities. And this is an aerial view of the, um, of the laboratory, at least a piece. It's close to a forest, it's surrounded by a forest uh, reserve. And this is the building, this is the main entrance where the buses will stop. And this is the main building where we have a LCF. So it's in this part, you won't see it, but you will see it when the other, they are constructing the new building to host Aurora. And then the other facilities are spread. And this is the APS, the advanced photon source. You will see the, how big those places are. Um, motivation, so probably a lot of you realize that <laughs> Supercomputers are getting very complicated. Um, yeah, as I, <laughs> I heard uh, some comments and uh, it's getting so complicated that we scientists, we cannot catch up in how it's going to uh, evolve our codes. So it's sometimes frustrating it's not being able to follow a particular trend. For example, do you want to focus on portability? Uh, well, then you decide to, to, to change your code, but it takes a lot of time to change a code and then realize that after probably five years, which is sometimes the time scale of those systems, you have to rechange again. So we are trying to provide, I wouldn't say hints, or, but a way or tricks to proceed so you don't, you go into the right direction, or at least you improve the probability that the codes that you work with or your science will evolve and will be still continue after eventually the end of your PhD or your career. Because you are all very young and probably you will be in this business, if we can call it business, uh, for at least 40 years or more. And you want to make sure that your work, at least the work that you're doing, is, is useful for you, for uh, the rest of the scientists. Sometimes when you start your PhD, a lot of them are evolving in the PhD of other people and then the codes get enormous and sometimes it's impossible to change direction and adapt to new machines and new systems. So it's really important to try to see, uh, to fill that gap. That's the, the main idea. Um, every year since 2013, we have this program we started, I think, about 60 people. We are trying to evolve to, to host as many people as we can, um, as, as many participants, excuse me. So we have, okay, we are 73, sorry, I forgot to correct that. Uh, you have two weeks with corresponds to approximately 100 hours of uh, training. You will have at the end a certificate that just um, shows that you, you attended. And the cost for you, except for those who came from international, uh, everything is covered. 
And that implies that the funding corresponds to approximately um, 1.4 million over three years. So we know 2019, 2021, we have that funding. So if uh, you think, if at the end of the program you, uh, you like it, uh, you can pass the, the information to your peers that in the next at least two years, this program is going to be still there. Um, and as I was mentioning initially, behind the scenes, we have more than 100 people that are volunteer working on, on, uh, on AdPesk. The curriculum. You probably saw the agenda from previous years. This time we have, uh, if I want to highlight the difference, uh, a new track lead, Jan Fei Guo, is a part of the track number two, and a new track lead in track number six. Uh, so those are your points of reference. If you want to ask, or at least you want to focus in a particular track, uh, find out more, go and talk to them uh, because they will be able to point you into the right direction. Uh, what is the person probably that you want to talk of the lecturers that are coming? You can also ask me too. I mean, I will be here all the time. But uh, th the point of this program is for you to talk with the experts because in two seconds or at least on 10 minutes, you can get some things uh, resolved that you may not think uh, about before. And we have a new track. So it took us time to get that into the agenda because this is an annual project and every year uh, you cannot do everything, so you have to wait till the next cycle. Uh, but in the end, we were able to add machine learning, uh, and in this case, machine learning, deep learning, AI, which we knew that in the next years, especially in the previous one, it was uh, demand. So you will have Friday, the last day of the second week, which uh, is the whole day recovered for that particular track. And we have, of course, two track leads, Benkat uh, um, and Prasanna, who will be here. And these are our dinner speakers. This is something that we try every year to make sure that we have different speakers. Some of the lecturers I may repeat, but dinner talks, we want to uh, show a variety of to topics that you can follow over from 2013 till the end of uh, the program. And we have very good speakers. You can check for all of them, for all the lecturers and all the dinner speakers, you can check on the agenda. And when you click in the image, you will see the bio uh, in addition to the picture. But the bio also will be included in the videos. So for you to, to get more information about uh, who are the lecturers and the presenters are for the day. I will not talk too much about the resources. Uh, will be Ray. I will just mention that we are going to have those systems. Um, those are the ALCF, Mira, Citus, Vesta, Culi, and Theta. As I mentioned before, Mira, and Citus, and Vesta are blue in Q, and they are going to be decommissioned at the end of the year. So I don't know. Uh, if you can, of course, access them. We don't have particular reservations on them for during these two weeks, but if someone uh, needs something related to those systems, we can still focus on those. So the one for the future is Cooley, which is a visualization cluster, and Theta also. And Yellow C, uh, this is particular from Argon. Those you have access. Um, some of you requested the accounts, other uh, no. We don't have a particular um, I was a reservation, uh, hands-on on that system, but still available for you. Uh, those are in general test beds of new machines where you, you don't run a very high scale. You want you to mm, change uh, something in your code and you want to try to, for example, to use the respective next GPU. Those are coming in general to this jealousy system. NERSC, we have Cody, and from OLC, we have Summit. Um, yeah. And this is very intensive. I mean, I've been here four years, and I can tell that two weeks from 8.30 till almost 9.30, you, you will be tired. <laughs> but uh, you have to manage to focus, or to make sure that you focus on the topics of interest, especially for your research, or your career, uh, or your future work. So try to check very well the agenda and mark it down. If we need, if you need, we can print it also for you. Um, 
and make sure that you are at the full potential of uh, performance at those moments because uh, the time that you spend here after will be, I mean, you know that going by email is not the same that in person. So if you have to talk with someone, you have to catch them in real time. Um, so you have 8.30 to 5.30 and then after that dinner talks, which is in a different place. I will show you in a map la uh, later. And um, after that, from 6.30 to 9.30, most of the days, we have hands-on. So those are, in general, for you to interact more with a particular your case and with the lecturers. Uh, so most of them are staying. Uh, but if someone in particular you want to talk, let us know, uh, because sometimes they are just coming and going for the, um, uh, they come and they, they leave. They are very busy people. So, <laughs> so they really, you have to catch them in real time. Um, the deliverables. We will have all the PDF of the presentations on the web. Um, you don't need to download them now, except if you really want. They will be they are available. Um, but at the end of the two weeks, we will post them all in a link in box. That way, it's easy for you to download and get. Especially also because sometimes after post-mortems, we get new versions. So you will have the latest and greatest of the PDF. The videos will be posted also hopefully September time period, um, approximately. It takes us time to ed review and edit, uh, but all of them will be there. And this is new. We started creating MP3 files. So um, if some of you probably are with your smartphones and running or something like that. Uh, we are trying to catch more audience, and we thought that that was a very easy way uh, to, to get that done. So they are not available yet. We have to structure the agenda in order to put them well. And because uh, we are lucky and always in effectives, uh, it takes some time. But they will be there for 2017, 2009, and hopefully the future years. And if you have ideas of any other format that may be useful, just let us know. Uh, I don't think we'll go into the paper, but uh, uh, so goals for the day. Check in. Most of you, I see that you have all your lanyards. That's a way of distinguish yourself from the rest of the people. We have uh, probably four groups, I think, at Q Center, each of them with different lanyards. So you want to know who is from Atpesk, uh, you will see the lanyard with Argon and your badge. Um, uh, my, th those who are staff is orange and yours is green, and the lecturers will be blue. So you will see that you can, it's a way for, for you to recognize. Um, if you have um, any pending login, try to finish that today. Um, login to machines, I mean, um, Ray will help you, but uh, just in case. So make sure that you pick up your tokens, your um, folders, which almost everybody has. Introductions, so we want you to make sure that you talk within you, because <laughs> a lot of you are from the same topics. We have plenty of people from CFD every year. Uh, I have a list, if someone is interested, of the um, just first name, last name, eventually email, and the scientific domain. I, we can provide that so for you to make connections. And uh, plan the rest of the two weeks. Uh, your statement of purpose, was requesting why do you, was showing why do you want to come? Go back to that and try to see uh, what can you get in uh, during these two weeks, um, because it's going to pass very fast. I can I can tell. <laughs> and get inspired. The point of this program here is for you to get new ideas. If you always do the same thing, probably you will not evolve. Uh, so try to find out new ideas that will help your code or your career or your research uh, into another level. Again, the machines are going to face from now on are very complicated, and it takes a lot of effort to change the codes, to change the way you work. So it really not so evident uh, always to find the, the best solution for your problem. Um, so give you time uh, to think about that and to discuss with uh, lecturers on your peers. Um, take advantage of the resources that you have a window of two weeks for jealousy, NERSC, and OLCF. That is just a way for you to start play, playing with those machines. Um, ALCF you have till the end of the month, till the end of, uh, not this month, 
August. Uh, but it's a way for you to see how your code is, is running in those systems. You can port it, you can try to uh, evaluate if it's, if you can tune it or adjust the profiling and, uh, and porting is the, the main work. So um, it's just a way for you to, to get uh, used to them. Some of you already have accounts, but most of you, you didn't have. So is that, uh, let us know if you have problems, we are here for that. Um, of course, enjoy. I mean, this is not 12 hours uh, training all focus in lectures. We are trying to make sure that at least you appreciate what, uh, why you are here and then you will like the topics that, uh, that will be presented. Logistics, very quick, because I think my time is four minutes only. Um, the website has the agenda, just click in the middle. We'll post this also there. That is very easy to filter. So you will probably see that you can filter by tracks, you can filter by days and the location. Main thing to remember, from 7.30 to 8.30, every day is the breakfast in the same place. Lunch from 12.30 to 1.30, every day in the same place. Uh, cute our dining. We have uh, ballroom three and nine, excuse me, three and six. Uh, three is for the first week. We will go into that direction. I will show you that's very easy, but all the dinner talks will be in a different place. And this will be the main classroom during the day from 8.30 to 5.30. So you will have to come here. But if you go into the agenda, it's very easy to, to, to use those filters to, to know what is happening on, during the day. Some of the tracks are, um, most of the tracks are one day, except for the programming models and languages. That is three days from Tuesday to Thursday this week. And we have uh, from the numerical algorithms, track number five, yep, this one, numerical algorithm and software for extreme scale science. That one, you have two speakers that are not speaking in the, that day. Uh, so if you go and filter by the track, you will see those days where those speakers, I think, he, I think it's Jim Demen and Jack Dongara, uh, have to check. Uh, but just to let you know that those are not specific topics of, that, uh, of the day of the track. Um, and then if you go into each section, you have a more info, you just click there and you will see a slide presentation. You click for today, you have the PDF and tomorrow we will post uh, the PDF of the sessions. Probably they won't be there till maybe five minutes before because sometimes we get last minute updates, but we will try to make sure that they are ready for you. And um, in your Argon pocket folder, you have uh, uh, information from Argon, from the different facilities. Uh, you have a map also of the Q Center, um, so you don't get lost. Remember that there are different levels. At least one or two days, it will take you to, to find out. And, um, and, and information about the, I think, the restaurants around, if someone needs. Uh, I mean, the food is very good, but if someone needs for the weekend, uh, you have information there. And this is the map that you have inside, big one. We are here, this number four is where we are, St. Charles Amphitheater. Most of you probably came and entered in this area. This is North Circle entrance, and this is uh, the main desk. Where we are having lunch and, and breakfast is in this area, Q Tower Dining. And the ballrooms for dinner are here. So we will go all outside this way, or we will go inside like this. Uh, it's very easy, just you do it a couple of times. But the, the whole complex is very big. So you have, well, this is where we go, ta, 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 south entrance. And uh, this is a summarized view. We have nourishment halves at the end of this hall. Every day you will have morning and afternoon. You can stop by any time Those are for the breaks. And this is our main classroom, and this is the office. Uh, tomorrow we won't have the check-in here. We will, everybody will be, at least everybody from operations, user experience, or um, um, uh, the administration will be in that office. If you need something, physically you can go there or you can uh, send us an email, whatever is, is better. Um, and this is, I always uh, like the Mensana and Compresano. So we know that is very intensive. So you, if you 
I mentioned that in the logistic email, you have to try to at least, if you like to, to do some sport, if you can, <laughs> because it's, uh, sitting all day is, uh, is hard. So for those who are not from the US, at five is almost day. <laughs> so you have daytime from five till approximately almost 8.30. So it's a long day. Um, in general, I go running before coming here, but that's uh, independent. You have this map too, and we are close to the Fox River. So for those who like running or also bicycle, you can um, rent a bike here and, uh, and go running uh, for the river. There are also some activities, golf, but I don't know if we will have time for that. <laughs> and if someone is interested about the food, particular um, information of per day, we have that in our bios, so we can share that. Um, if you had mentioned any particular dietary restriction, we are aware of that. So the, the chefs are uh, in charge of making sure that everything is uh, happy, you have or vegetarian or vegan or the particular request. Um, so let me know. And tonight, it used to be a dinner talk, but we are changing and at that, during the dinner talk um, time, we are having the introductions. Uh, how it's gonna be, if you remember well, we asked you for this slide, but this is mine. Uh, you will have the person, up, name, remember the logo of the institution, their particular image, that's from my PhD, uh, and then your topics, um, research interests and personal interests. And we are always uh, seeking ideas and improvement. Sometimes we know, it takes us time, as I mentioned before, because it's an annual project to, to go over some changes, but uh, your feedback is very appreciated. So every day, uh, we change that because we have to introduce the track. So every day you will have, uh, every day that is the end of the track, you will have um, a small exam that is not at the end of the program. Very brief questions and also the survey. Um, especially both of them are, are very appreciated. And behind the scenes here physically, we will have some admin staff. I will leave their names, you will see their bags. Uh, the badge, excuse me, here, and you can uh, interact with them. Today we have Robert and Harita for user services, and operations we have Adam, and uh, we have Jeannie, and uh, India is uh, outside, and Yashi also. And um, I wanna thank those who are funding this training program because it's, uh, we know there is a lot of uh, um, funding coming for that, and it's all going with you because everybody else is volunteer. So it's ECP, the scale computing project, which is helping change hardware and software in moving into those new systems that we are gonna face in uh, a couple of years. So thank you, uh, I would like to acknowledge um, ECP as the funding resource. And this is especially for the machines. It's not so easy to get allocations on those systems, um, ALCF, OLCF, and NERSC also uh, acknowledge me for their, uh, their contribution. And that's the end of my presentation. I will be with you two weeks. I really hope that you will enjoy it, and uh, thank you all for coming here.